we are back with yet another episode of Train Simulator Classic. With another continuation of our Pennsylvania Railroad DLC starting off. Or not starting off, but uh, kicking day off with the, uh, the Baldwin RF-16s. Now for those of you that might be curious as to why there was so much hate pushed on the last Baldwin that we looked at, the, uh, the DS6s, well, stay tuned, you're, you're gonna find out. So this pack was released in 2015, uh, and those DS6s were effectively a stretched version of this. Uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad was the largest buyer of these locomotives. Uh, they proved to be f a far more superior design over the DS6s. These were much more successful. Uh, these were also owned by the New York Central. And one other road that I'm not too certain on who it was. Had to look back at my notes here, but uh. The New York Central was a big buyer, but uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad was the largest buyer. Uh, Baltimore and Ohio, that's who. <coughs> so, during their operational years, now there were two units that were saved from scrapping by the Delaware and Hudson, who operated their two A units for a hot minute up until the mid-80s. And since then, they have been stored out of view of the public. Uh, as to what will happen to them is anybody's guess. No word has been pushed out on them in many years. But there is still hope. There are still two two of the A units around. The I believe were originally New York Central, but this pack was done by DTM. You will get an A unit, a B unit, and a non driver A unit. Uh, you will only get one color scheme, it's a five stripe scheme, uh, and green. Uh, right off the bat, this is older, so gotta be a little nice to it. It came around in 2015, so it's been a few years, but I will say right off the bat, again, too, that, uh, it does come with freight cars, and the freight cars are nothing new as well. Matter of fact, the freight cars are older than the locomotives. Uh, don't believe me? Go to Golden Age of Railroading, and you will find all of these freight cars available for free. So, for $20, what you're effectively paying for is this, this, and that over there. All that's free. That is, that is available for free. <coughs> So I highly recommend you uh, pick this up on a sale. Don't uh, don't pay full price. I'm sorry, but uh, just go ahead and get that out of the way. It's it's not worth full price. But uh, these locomotives were used primarily for freight services, uh, as far as the Pennsylvania Railroad goes. Uh, the Penzi units will be a little bit unique in that they've got the train phone equipped, which is a pretty common item across the Pennsylvania Railroad, but uh, you will not get any other variations except for these. Now, for those of you that might be slightly curious as to why a lot of us were frustrated with the Baldwin DS6 that was released in 2019, four years after this, the cabs are identical, literally. It is a literal copy and paste cab. Absolutely no, no work was done on the DS6 to update and upgrade. It is quite literally copy and paste. The sounds are copy paste. Now granted, credit where it's due, the RF-16s are effectively a DS6 cut in half. Uh, it uses a 608 uh, motor it's just a single though, not a double. And instead of the six axles, you get the uh, the four wheel or the f 
the four axle bodies <clears throat> but uh yeah, right off the bat, it's it honestly looks better than the RF-16. Right off the bat, I uh, I don't know what's going on here, but that is a noticeable something. Detail-wise, uh, it's not bad for 2015. For today's standards though there are some things that are starkly obvious like the mesh up here that is just a blurry Photoshop image the same for meshes here uh, the striping is very blurry now the, the Pennsylvania Railroad uh, emblem here actually looks pretty good uh, credit where it's due the emblem does look good but the striping is blurry as hell the numbers don't match the blurry as hell striping. The numbers actually look pretty good. Again, blurry ass mesh. Uh, and none of these are objects. So these body lines are not separate. These are all one flat Photoshop mesh. No, uh diaphragms either which is kind of odd uh, no real weathering either which is a bit odd too but uh, oh well unlike the uh, the DS6's the black used is laughably better you can actually see the detail not that there's a whole ton to really look at but it is there you can see it it's not just a midnight black that's physically impossible to see in the brightest of day. Um, typical antiquated knuckle couplers, but hey, no missing uh <laughs> no missing texture. Really sh shiny noticeable wills which is just kinda kinda killer but oh well uh, for 2015 honestly this wasn't that bad <coughs> it really wasn't uh, for today's standards it could stand for an update but one could say the DS6 should have been an updated version of uh, that right there effectively and uh, yeah it wasn't it was that right there blended into one piece and uh, called cool <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> I imagine many a person crawled up those steps and smacked their head on that curve right there so that is an unusual door Uh, I do believe the uh, the knuckle couplers on the front of the locomotives are supposed to fold down. It's uh, kind of odd that that's not opted for on these models, given that they're supposed to be semi-streamlined or streamlined bodies. But okay, whatever. Uh, with the pack, you will get a 40 foot, a 50 foot. Uh, box car, a 40 and a 50 foot box car. Uh, again, these are old. These are old, old. These are freeware from Great Northerner, available on Golden Age of Railroading for free. I don't know why you would pay for these, but you know, cool, whatever if you do. Uh, yeah, these are old. Matter of fact, they don't even match the 2015 build for these. But, you know, okay, whatever. Quantity over quality, I guess, these days. One could say for a train simulator. Uh, they will all be Pennsylvania Railroad. 
different loads for the bulkheads. These are not loadable. They will come preloaded. The number, the dynamic numbering is a noticeably different color in white than the, uh, the Pennsylvania lettering. And it's a, a starkly noticeable difference, but whatever. They get one of these tank cars, which, hey, it's not the, uh, the standard Kuju tank car we've been seeing for years on end, but uh, it's not new either. It's just as old as the rest of the pack. <laughs> These cars are freeware. And then you'll get a caboose, which, uh, yeah, it's neat in that it's a unique for the Pennsylvania Railroad. And I would say the texturing on the standard caboose that comes with the horseshoe curve is better. Ah. Is it terrible? No. I, the model itself doesn't look bad. The texturing though is uh, mm. off. <laughs> to put it simply. And it, it most of the objects are just flat objects with uh, Photoshop printed textures. which uh, Whatever. I guess it matches the rest of the freight. But yeah, so the freight the caboose, nothing really special, kind of pitiful, dated, old, ah, the hole. And again, like I said, you will get a, uh, a non-driver variant of the A units. We'll hop inside again, like I said, if you guys watched the, uh, the DS6 video you you know full well already what this cap it is literal copy paste identical so we got our uh, little side windows no sound no sound no sound no sound no sound occlusion either Door does make a noise, which isn't horrible. This does all translate outside. Cab lights, switch is right there. That mesh is old as balls, uh, but again, 2015. Wasn't too bad for 2015. For today though, terrible a very noticeable angled angled curve <laughs> I don't know how you describe that it's not round I'll turn that off uh, can we fiddle with anything back here nope engine room lights Not too bad. And oh, hi. Unlike the DS6, <laughs> yeah, the lights don't translate inside here. But there is an object. I don't entirely know why this is modeled in here because you can't see it, like at all. You can't go back there. You can't see anything. You can't do anything with it. So I. I I don't entirely know why it's there, but yeah, it's there. Yeah. If it floats your boat, it floats your boat. It's a very large exhaust port, and it's just gray inside. The smoke looks terrible. <laughs> the smoke looks fresh out of Minecraft. You see the uh, you can see the squares. So the exhaust looks horrible. The sounds, uh, the engine sounds, originally done on the uh, the Baldwin Centipedes, I believe, from Repro. So nothing new with the engine sounds. Uh, horn. Mm, it's not bad. Again, not really new. Uh, 
it's not loud. It's I it <laughs> you can barely hear it right there. So this is at the edge of our just following camera number two. And you can barely hear the horn, but you can still hear the engines running just fine. Matter of fact, right about yeah, you can still very faintly hear it. Right about here at the crossing. And you can't hear it. So the horn is laughably quiet. But it's not terrible. But it does have a loop. It has a full second loop. So that's as short as you can play it. Uh, bell. Standard DTM bell. Nothing special there. Uh, cool note with these for those looking for prototypical running on their uh, routes you would almost exclusively see these matched up only Baldwin Baldwin to Baldwin Baldwin used a pneumatic throttle an air powered throttle an air connected throttle something along those lines so they couldn't standard from the factory be used immune to anything else any other brand no GE no AMD no nothing uh, I would say that's probably one of the reasons that these were retired pretty early on and a lot of railroads opted to just outright scrap them because they had to have special MU units put in them to run them with any other brand so this is one of those odd locomotives where it would look absolutely normal to have nothing but RF-16s paired up Uh, brakes released, brakes released. There's no fancy braking with these. This predates the smoke box fancy braking. Brake sounds are okay. Not my favorite, but they're not terrible. Uh,. I don't know what's going on. This this visually irks me. You can see that there's a separate object, but the black bleeds through onto everything else. It just ugh. your emergency brake for your fireman. Other switches. Turn those. Instrument lights. Cab heater, which no sound, just like the uh, the DS6. Wipers. Standard wiper sound. Number board, class board, headlights. You gross headlights are ugly as balls, and they're neon white, bright white LEDs that did not exist when these locomotives were built. Matter of fact, the bright white LEDs did not exist when these locomotives were retired. So, uh, yeah, the headlights are wrong, way wrong, and hideous, and noticeably not connected to the light. <laughs> I, yeah, that's kind of odd, one could say, off, one might say. Marker lights, pretty typical of a uh, DTM, nothing special there. Uh, another board lights, uh, probably the best of the lights. The best looking of the lights, they're not neon white, but... I, yeah, it looks like there's a bar, a light bar behind there. And again, they, they definitely look better. I don't know that these have a reverse light. I guess I could just go over here. Yeah, these don't have a reverse light. Really nothing going on on the back here. So, turn all these extra lights off now. We don't need them. Oh, instrument lights. Uh, 
Eh. Not bad. Not my favorite. Can we open our nose door? Nope. I mean, overall, oh, there's our handbrake. I was gonna say there's not a handbrake anywhere. Uh, hmm. Well, that's interesting. Does it set the handbrake? It does. It just pulls up and resets. Cool. Overall, the texturing doesn't look uh, terrible per 2015 standards. Detail work doesn't look terrible per 2015 standards. But I dare say you stick this up next to something newer made in the last few years, last couple years, such as, oh, I don't know. Repo's GP20s. This looks laughably dated. Uh, I can't think of anything DTM has made in the recent years that this wouldn't look completely normal next to, though. <laughs> but it doesn't look bad for 2015 standards. I don't know what's going on with the window with this weird streaking, but it's hideous. It looks like oil. It looks like oil that's been leaking across the tie. You can kind of see the rainbowy color, that kind of orangish blue sheen that oil gives off when it gets wet. That's that's what that looks like, my opinion. But let's take it down the road. Reverse forward, brakes off. Uh-huh. That's one of those that the brakes are the other direction. Yep, they are. There we go. Brakes off. Well, we hit not notch sounds for the first two notches, but I guess not the third. And clicks on for the fourth. I love that the RPM, uh, the uh, the Westinghouse gauge here. It, uh, I don't think that's the RPM gauge. I feel like you'd be. If if I remember correctly, these do not idle at very uh, at a very high RPM. And maybe it is, but the RPM gauge immediately jumps up when you throttle up. And then it settles back down, which kind of weird. It is our voltage, our ampage. Yeah, that's our amps. That's zero amps. Okay, so we don't have our RPM gauge. That's entertaining. Uh, speedometer. We can't see because the. Uh, Throttle ropes on the way. That weird squealing that like comes on, goes off, comes on, goes off. Don't like it. Physics don't exist. All right, throttle up. This thing takes off. Kind of more typical older. Train simulator, Kuju, early IHH, early DTM stuff that you, you expect it really. And you throttle up, and even with the load, it just kind of takes off. Which, eh, granted, where it's due. This is not a heavy, heavy load. Uh, each unit's about 1600 horsepower, so. Got about 3200 horsepower right here. Dragging that. It's pretty. 32. Yeah, 3,200. Sorry, I gotta do math in my head. For once, our speedometer actually matches, though. I 
I hate whistles that have a sticky loop. I really do. I, I like to be able to blow the whistle myself. <laughs> I love that the uh, the track sound, the clacking, the clickety clack there is louder than the horn. It's almost louder than the engine. Which is just kind of eh. And for those wondering, we're on a Zavals, Kentucky route again. Available from Railworks America. That kind of a noticeable notch wind down. You hear that? It's not too terribly noticeable, but it is noticeable. It is there. So let's grab some brakes here. See how quick it stops. Hey, how nice. It doesn't stop on a dime like so much other stuff does. So braking's not too bad. I feel like it picks up and goes laughably fast but it's braking is pretty decent it doesn't just stop on a dime let's throw up our emergency that's where it kicks on so it's not too bad god the headlight is awful so it's not that's well, not bad the braking is nice uh, let's kill it Chug, 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 chug. Hmm. Entertainingly enough, we shut down the engine, right? Y'all heard that? The engine ain't running. Smoke. Hmm. That is a hell of a crank up. You know, that little wind-up wouldn't have been half bad if the normal idle audio didn't kick on immediately. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, overall, it's not a bad locomotive. I do, like I said earlier, I do suggest buying it on a sale and not paying full price because... Most of you that are watching this have probably already picked up everything free off of Great Northerner. And uh, yeah, these are free. There's no sense in paying for it. And while the models are not bad, they're dated. They show their date. They show their age. So, overall, laughably better option than the, uh, the DS6s are. Laughably, laughably better. But, uh... I guess just like real life. Um, overall, the texturing's not too bad. Cab texturing is not terrible. Sounds are alright. It's just, it shows its age. Right. This is not bad for 2015, but... You can pick this up on Steam. Um, yeah, not much else to say. Hope you guys enjoyed.